Hey girl, are your healthy habits all over the place or non-existent? Do you wish you could find true food freedom, move your body for joy, and really just talk a little nicer to yourself? If you have tried to have it hack your health, but the strategies you've tried just haven't worked for you in your busy lifestyle, then this podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach, behavior change specialist, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I'm here to tell you there is an easier way than what we've been taught about our health and our habits. How do I know? Well, because I've transformed my own life through habit hacking and now my family gets the best of me and I now help my clients do the same. I'm now going to teach you how to create healthy habits and less time guilt-free for all seasons of your life. It's not your fault your habits haven't worked, my friend. We just have to do them differently. So are you ready to feel empowered and transform your habits and life? Then let's do this. You're listening to episode 224 of Habit Hack Your Health. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. This is going to be a very vulnerable, very just real life episode. I recently turned 42 in August and to be very honest and transparent with you, this past birthday was a little rough for me. Like for real, I was all in my feelings about like being in my 40s. You know what I mean? I felt like this when I turned 31 as well. Just like, oh wow, I'm like in my 30s now. And I don't know if everything, you know, over the past few years, when the year I turned 40, a lot of my girlfriends did too. And we planned so many girls trips because it was after 2020. And we were like, we're going, we're going all the places. We're having all the girls trips. So it was so fun. And then the next year, I think some of it still spilled over. And then this year, it was just kind of like, oh, well, I'm in my 40s. I'm 42. I'm technically a millennial. I was born in 1981, and millennials are supposedly like between 1981 and 1996. So I'm like an elder millennial. And I just feel like there's just a whole different range of challenges that we face now that is different when my mom was this age. Like I remember my mom turning 40 and it being in her early 40s. And she says all the time, like how much extra pressure we have now as working moms and whatnot. And I thought, you know, I can't be the only one that feels this way. So I just wanted to share a very vulnerable episode for you in hopes that maybe you won't feel so alone and that maybe you feel the same way too as far as the challenges we face And how I personally habit hack these challenges, how I'm still working through these challenges and adapting to being 42, right? I know I can't be the only one that feels this way. And, you know, this is not like perfect. This is just real life. And like I said, I just want to share my feelings and thoughts about being 42 in hopes that Maybe you feel the same way and feel a little seen as far as how you feel as well. So let's talk about it. So grab grab a coffee. Let's have a little heart-to-heart girl chat together. Or maybe you need a margarita. On the rocks, no salt for me. <laughs> All right, let's go. You know, I had to really kind of narrow down what I wanted to talk about. I just didn't want to ramble forever because I feel like I really could have. But I want to talk about six challenges that I feel like I'm personally facing as far as being a busy working millennial mom, a 42-year-old mom, and just the challenges that I'm personally facing. So number one, work-life balance. Girl, we are just so connected all the time to email, text, teams. Zoom, Google Meet. Gosh, I use all three of those and I just cannot. (laughs) It, It makes it very hard to disconnect from work, right? It's hard to just snap your fingers and switch from being, you know, 
employee, entrepreneur, podcaster. I'm doing some fundraising consulting on the side as well right now. It's hard just to turn off and take off that work hat and go in and put on your mom hat and be super present because we're so connected. It's not like you work your nine to five and you leave and you're done. You have to be super intentional as far as maybe turning off your notifications, making a rule for yourself that you are not going to reply to any me emails, set some boundaries for yourself, and also some habit hacks maybe at the end of your workday to give you an actual cue, a new habit loop, a cue that it is time to be done with work. I usually like to use music as that for me. Usually when my kids are getting out the bus, I usually go out and sit on my front porch. I listen to music or watch funny dog videos. <laughs> and that's my cue to that. It's okay. Boom. It's time to turn on mom mode. So you have to be super intentional with that. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to be like, well, let me just check this email but trust me, it's going to help you feel so much more present versus all those wheels constantly turning up all the other things you have going on because work and life need to be separate. Number two, we are so over scheduled. We're over scheduled. We're over stimulated. I think I just talked about this on a recent episode too, right? Like, I cringe at the word busy, right? If you ever talk to one of your girlfriends, you're like, hey, how's it been? And they're like, I'm so busy. And you're like, me too. Like, it's so true though. It is so very true. I feel like I am a full-time Uber driver for my boys. I'm constantly taking them to their activities, to hang out with friends. I love how social they are. And as they're getting older, they're 15 and 11, a sophomore and a sixth grader, you know, they're, they're really leaning into their friends. And I love the choices of friends that they're making and the relationships they're building. And my son will be driving next year, which is great, but that brings up a whole another like array of emotions for me too. But if I'm not driving them somewhere, girl, I am, you know, thinking about where they are, where when I need to pick them up, where they need to be at this time or at that time, communicating with my husband. And on top of that, I have to think of what's for dinner, <laughs> scheduling all the things that I schedule that you know, that um, dermatologist appointment for my son. Oh my gosh, I have to fold all this laundry. So we're just overscheduled. We're overstimulated thinking of all the things that we have to do. Hence why women have to do healthy habits differently, right? So one way to habit hack this is to every Sunday sit down and do a Sunday planning session. This is what I personally do. This is what we teach inside of our accelerator program because you have to know what is coming up throughout the week. Have a plan in mind, because if you don't, you're going to forget. Trust me, we just started a new month, and I forgot my son had an orchestra performance. I forgot to do my Sunday planning. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, it's October 2nd. I thought I was a week behind. <laughs> so I had to like scramble to make sure that he was ready to go for that. So sit down, do that Sunday planning session. You'll feel a little bit more in control of your schedule, know what's coming up, and honestly be a lot, a lot less forgetful too. Next, digital parenting. Ooh, it's so different than when my kids were babies and toddlers. And it's just a whole new level of worry now, this preteen and teenager stage, right? So based on my own experiences with my kids and doing a little research on Gen Z, which my kids are Gen Z kids, they put so much more pressure on themselves and they're so connected and anxiety is at an all-time high. And it's because they're so like on all the time. It's not like they just go to home from school and like their friends come over and play or like they call to like to like chit chat with like their friends. Like they're snapping each other all day. They're wanting social media, which is not something we're down for getting yet. All I think my oldest has is Snapchat because like honestly that was the only way to communicate with some friends. Like it's insane. 
and we are, I'm trying to stay connected to them as well. You know, I download Snapchat and I'm trying to do like a snap streak with my son just to like stay connected and communicate with him. Or, you know, if he gets on the bus in the morning, I'm coaching. I'll send him like a funny gif, usually like Happy Gilmore because he golfs. And I'm like, have a good day. And you just want to help them be connected, but also help them make good decisions and good choices and help them set boundaries around technology and social media and modeling that for them as well. And that's hard, right? I get sucked into my phone so easily, and I know they do too. And it's a lot of trial and error right now when it comes to digital parenting and raising teenagers in themselves. I always tell my oldest son, I'm like, look, dude, I've never raised a teenager before, so I'm going to make mistakes along the way. Please be patient with me. So keeping that in mind with digital parenting, I personally am setting boundaries for myself and I got a little basket and we're like, we're putting our phones up in the evening. I don't need to stay connected because everyone that I need to be connected with is here under my roof, unless, you know, they're not here, which a lot of times they're not too. I'll have that phone handy in case they need me, but I have to model that behavior to them. And I saw this quote. My husband actually sent it to me the other day because my oldest, like I said, he's a sophomore. He has a phone. My youngest is 11. He's sixth grade. He does not have a phone. My oldest, when he was in sixth grade, we got him a phone just to allow for communication and tracking purposes. And my husband sent me this quote the other day. And it was like, give your child a phone and take a piece of their childhood. I mean, just stab me in the heart, right? (laughs) But At the same time, I'm like, okay, we're going to try to delay this as much as possible for my younger son. Number one, he he has a tendency of losing things. My oldest was a little more responsible at that age, to tell you the truth. And I'm just not ready for him to have that added pressure that they tend to have from that Gen Z mindset from being connected all the time and modeling healthy habits when it comes to technology. Okay. Um, Am I perfect? Heck no. Am I working on it? Absolutely. I'm trying to model that for my kids as well. Next, health and hormones. Oh, girl. Am I going through perimenopause? I don't know. Google tells me I am. My husband's like, you're too young to go through that. I'm like, dude, it says like I can start like in your 30s. I don't even know. But if you're if you're anything like me, are you like, what in the world is going on what I have always done for my body as far as like nutrition and movement. It ain't working the same anymore. Okay. (laughs) What is, isn't, it's just not working now. And that has a lot to do with our hormones. So for me personally, I'm on a journey of focusing on less impact, more sleep and recovery instead of going all out all the time. I'm personally going to start getting my hormones checked by a local functional medicine a doctor because I think it's important to have that data. But also, I think it's important to listen to your body. Do a little research. Get the data, which is the first step in our habit hacking system, right? You always have to get the data because sometimes we have we need facts and not feelings, right? We have all these feelings like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I just need to go harder. I need to restrict my calories more. Like, no. We just need to change it up. I'm 42 now. Maybe I'm going through perimenopause. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. But I need to get the data to show where I'm at and take that data and go from there. So for me, I'm experimenting right now. Lower impact, which has been feeling really good and really a big focus on sleep. I do get up at 3.50 a.m. two days a week to coach. So I need to ensure I am getting plenty of quality sleep. Otherwise, my body is going to feel the impact. Number five, we are just so over diet culture BS, aren't we? Like, okay, if you're like me, you're 42, you've tried it all, you watch your mom try it all, and you just you just want to feel energetic, right? You just want to feel good from the inside out, Okay. I know you're over it. You've tried it all and you're like, I just need to work on my mindset and it's funny how everything will fall into place from there. You're tired of diet culture mentality and what you have grown up seeing and believing and what we still see on social media. You're just tired of it because I am. 
I am. Obviously, since this is what a big part of what we teach inside of the Accelerator program is overcoming diet culture BS and that mindset, and it takes some work and really working on the end side out. But I know you're tired of it too. And we just need to get back to the basics and train our minds and then our bodies. And number six, social media and beauty standards. Okay, like we've had social media since like late college or so, early adulthood. I don't even know. Like we're not we're not falling for it anymore. Meaning we're no longer falling for the filters. Everyone's showing just their highlight reels. Although it's easy to fall back into that and compare yourself, trust and believe I do it too. And I just want the real stuff. I want I want to be educated and I want to be entertained on social media, right? I want you to show me a really awesome recipe that I want to see a funny meme about millennial moms like jamming out to like 90s and early 2000s hip hop and getting a Starbucks. <laughs> That's what I want to see. And funny dog videos. Okay. So uh, the beauty standards that are out there, we're not falling for it anymore. We're just not. We're tired of that BS as well. Or maybe you're not, but I personally am. <laughs> so what has helped me throughout all of these challenges is habit hacking. Like we've kind of, like I've kind of sprinkled in here for you. And giving myself grace, which is hard. I know. We're our own worst critic, aren't we? Knowing that my body and my life is changing as different seasons of my life come and go, as my kids get older, as my business grows, as I grow, as my relationship with my husband grows and my kids, my relationships around me with my parents, my siblings, my friends. But what can stay constant for me is my healthy habits. Having some basic habits in place to take care of my fundamental needs, that mindset, movement, and food freedom are key. And it's simple. And honestly, if I didn't start on this journey back in 2015, I think I would be a hot mess right now. Now, do I feel like a hot mess some days? Yes. Am I a hot mess? No. Absolutely not. So, friend... Thank you for listening. (laughs) Let me know on Instagram if you were listening and you were like, yes, 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 girl, and amen. (laughs) And if you need some help, I'm opening my calendar for some one-on-one healthy habit intensive calls. So this is a call where we'll sit down, we'll habit hack your day together and talk about some specific healthy habits that you want to habit hack together around mindset, movement, and food freedom, and you'll get continued Voxer access from from me from there and some tools from the Habit Hack Shop as well to help you track those habits. If you're anything like me, I need a little extra accountability and going into the holiday season. If you need a little one-on-one help, let's do it. So it's linked in the show notes for you, my friend. I'd love to chat with you. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's via Zoom. We'll make it work. Okay, friends, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I feel better getting it off my chest and I hope you feel seen and you don't feel so alone if you're in your early 40s like me because my friend, I feel like we're just getting started. Let's freaking go. I'll see you later this week. Hey girl, real quick before you go, did you know I have a secret podcast where I talk all about why most habit strategies don't work for us women? Spoiler alert, it's not our fault. (laughs) Visit bit.ly slash atomic habits for women. It's linked in the show notes to access my secret podcast series and have your biggest aha moment about why and how women have to do habits differently. And if you love the podcast, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Love and appreciate you, friend. We'll see you next time.